Hello, my name is Michael and today I'm talking to you about ultraviolet and Canon cameras. Not talking about the filters, the UV filters that everyone talks about, but actually taking ultraviolet photos with your Canon camera. So why do we want to use a camera to take photos of UV and what can we take photos of? Well the UV reflectance in flowers um, which is anywhere from 350 nanometers to 400 nanometers anywhere in that range maybe a bit lower is what bees can see. Human beings in the visual range we can't see it but bees and other animals they're attracted to various plants by the UV reflectance they can see. The whole idea of taking UV photos is to take photos of things we can't normally see and find the patterns in items and basically just observe. The first thing you need is going to be a Canon camera. Now I've spent a fair bit of time researching this to try and find the right Canon camera and uh, I've come up with the 600D. One of the main reasons I chose this camera is due to the screen that you can fold out and flip around especially seeing as the greatest source of ultraviolet light is actually from the sun and you're outside and viewing the viewfinder or the back of the screen in the sun it reflects and of course you can't see anything so having the articulated screen is a fantastic benefit this uh, 600D that you see before you I've had modified and basically that involves setting the camera away and having the IR cut filter and the auto cleaning and all those sorts of little things removed so that the CMOS sensor is exposed directly to the sunlight turning this camera into a full spectrum camera. I could have gone another method and I could have actually converted this to a black and white UV only camera um, that makes the camera somewhat limited in what I can do with it so I've opted to go with various filters and things on the end of the camera rather than replacing the glass here with a UV filter at this level. The camera you see before you is open with the shutter um, with the mirror sorry, flipped up so that hopefully you can see into it. Um, basically the damage done to the camera when they change the filter is minimal, in fact none. They break the, probably the filter as they take it out but that's about it. Now the reason we need to do this is cameras by default they filter out anything ultraviolet and anything infrared. Um, the normal spectral range that we can see is above 400 nanometers. For UV we're heading below that. CMOS sensors are likely only to be able to probably interpret above 350 nanometers and that's really what I'm aiming to do. So I've sent this camera away, someone has removed the IR cut filter for me and replaced it with quartz. Glass can actually filter out UV so I've actually gone for quartz, a company called Spectrosil and that's what's gone in place of the IR cut. Some of the things that prevent us from doing UV photography are new modern lenses with anti-UV coatings on the front of the lens elements and the glass that's in the lens elements. The more glass that UV passes through, the more likely it is to be filtered out and bounced away and not appear in your image. In the old days, Nikon made EL Nikkor enlarger lenses designed for enlarging negatives onto film surfaces. These lenses are fantastic, they're the cheap entry into UV photography you can spend thousands of dollars on a proper Nikon lens, a Nikon 105, which has got quartz elements in it and passes UV fantastically. However, in mucking around and playing, we've found that there's a bunch of EL Nikkor lenses which can be obtained on eBay quite cheaply that can also pass quite a bit of UV light. The problem with these lenses is they're not going to fit straight away to your camera they're also going to um, need to be filtered and so you're going to have to find the right filter rings to attach your filters to the front. But once you've got these lenses you've then got to invest in some other attachments. First one being the M39 attachment. These are a screw-on fitting that need to go to the back of the lens so that we can then adapt it out to further uh, fit the camera. So here we have an EOS for Canon M39 adapter obtained off eBay quite cheaply have some additional items here. We have a bellows. This bellows unit I have found I've needed to use it to achieve focus. So I've attached the Canon um, to M39 adapter here with the lens on it and attached this to the body of the camera and then I'm able to achieve short focus. 
almost a macro focus. And here I have the macro extension tubes. Again, all these items very cheaply obtained off of eBay. This particular item, I've used it to get focus up to 1.8 meters away. So I've actually taken the rings apart. Once they're apart, I've created a short little tube. And then from that short little tube, I can mount the lens at a point where I can get more distance out of my focus. Other items I found indispensable is a remote trigger because you can actually have quite a long exposure sitting there while you're trying to get it all focused and get it actually to occur through the filter and a four-way macro slider which I've had to use when I'm sitting there 1.8 meters away and I'm just slightly out of focus I can use that to move the camera around slightly to achieve focus. So using my favourite lens so far, which is the Nikon EL Nikkor 75mm f4 lens, I've got my camera. In this case, I would use the bellows and I would get the lens. And I would attach that using the M39 adapter, which just screws on like so, to the front of the bellows, to the front of the camera. Uh, if I can get it with the bayonet on. There we go. So I now have a camera using the lens which I can adjust the focal length so that I can get things in focus. Now the one part that's missing here is of course the filter and the filter needs special consideration. There are a number of different filters out there that you can purchase. Uh, you need to make sure it doesn't pass any infrared. I've gone for the Beta U which is used mostly in the telescope field for filtering out light around planets and things like that. You'll notice there's two colours. There is a pinkish side and a yellow side. Mount it with the yellow side to the actual sensor to get the best response. And there we go. This camera is now ready for me to take photos. Unfortunately, I can only get focus at around about 16 centimetres. So use a tripod, and that's your best way to use that. If you decide to mount the actual macro tubes, that mounts slightly different, and that's where you can use the four-way slider. Here we have the camera, the beta U, and we have what we've already shrunk from the macro tubes. If we attach the EL liquid lens to the front of the macro tubes, attach to this to the front of the camera, we can now get focus up to 1.8 metres away. Unfortunately, the depth of field is not that great. This is an F4 lens and I have to use it at F4. If I try to use it at any other um, aperture, the image blows out and doesn't really work. So setting up this camera on a tripod with a nice steady hand, setting probably the um, shutter to about 1 20th of a second and working my way up to 1 6th of a second, ISO starting at ISO 400, maybe creeping up to 800 um, and in full light, you should be able to get some very good, well at least reasonable, photos of various UV reflectance on flowers. This is using a Canon, I've chosen Canon because I have a big investment in Canon and in the lenses and bodies. Uh, Nikon apparently has the edge when it comes to UV, it may do, I haven't tried it. I believe that with a Nikon you can just simply point and shoot and you don't have to worry about changing all the settings and, and stopping up or down or anything like that to get an image. With the Canon though I found this quite respectable and I've been able to get some very good images. From here, my experimentation, I'll be looking at trying to get a UV flash. So that's probably going to be a Vivitar flash with a Xenon tube and remove all the UV blockers and try and make a UV only flash and I'll look at additional lenses. There are other lenses in the EO Nickel range I'd like to try. Um, I've currently got the 800, sorry, 80 millimeter and also the 50 millimeter, and I'm trying to find something that's a bit more comfortable to shoot with so that uh, I know roughly how far away from the object I need to be and things like that. And then from this, I end up with my UV photos, all done with a Canon EOS camera.